Hey team, welcome to today's workout. We're back into the green bodyweight workouts. Um, so the green level being beginner level. If you are new to working out or if you'd like to give something a shot, this is a perfect one. We're actually doing most of the movements here today on the floor. So if you've got a floor mat, go grab it. If not, you'll be pretty right on a carpeted area. Um, if you do have hard floors, just watch your knees. So you might wanna get a cushion or something for your knees there, but um, a nice beach towel or a, or a yoga mat should be sufficient for this one. Um, so first off, I'm gonna talk you through the, the motions and the movements and the holds that we're doing today, and then we'll get into the workout. So if you do wanna skip straight to the workout, check the chapter markers below in the comments um, or in the, in the description field, hit that and we'll see you there. Um, otherwise, you can see the first hold that we're gonna do is a plank. A plank is on the floor here. It's a good core coordination and a core strength movement. What we're doing is actually popping our forearms down on the floor. We're gonna push our legs back. We're gonna stack our shoulders over the top of our elbows. Sid's gonna keep me company here. Hey mate. And see now that I've got a kitty under me, I have to be super careful to not let my hips dip. I'm not gonna crush this boy. So I'm gonna straighten my legs, push the heels back, squeeze the butt, squeeze the quads and then breathe into that. So that's a, that's a plank. Now, after the planks, we're doing a crab hold. The crab hold is the other way around. So we're gonna sit our butts down on the floor, plant your feet flat down, fingertips pointed towards your heels, and we're gonna push our hips up towards the ceiling like a coffee table. So the crab hold itself, shoulders in extension, hips up as high as you can, 90 degrees in the legs, 90 degrees in this shoulder extension. That's a crab hold. After the crab hold, we're gonna step up. We're gonna perform some side lunges. Now these ones you can do on the mat if you, if you want to, you don't have to. A side lunge is very much like a, like a step forward lunge, except we're gonna take one leg, step to the side. Now the depth of your side lunges is gonna be determined by your skill level, the strength that you've got in your legs. But what we're doing is keeping one leg straight, other leg bending, torso upright. So we'll talk more about that when we get into it. Bridge lifts. We're gonna pop back down onto our mats. We're gonna take a, uh, we're gonna watch out for, watch out for any pets you've got around, okay? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> we're gonna lay back down onto the floor, keeping your shoulder blades on the floor here. We're gonna perform a bridge, and then one leg lift, and down. We're gonna go up, one leg out, and then down. So that's the bridge and the lift there. After the bridge lifts, we're gonna do plank knee touches. So this plank, <clears throat> we're, gonna, we're gonna change it up a little bit. Instead of being a forearm plank, what you're gonna do is a high plank. So hands on the floor, feet on the floor, squeezing the butt, straighten those legs. And what we're gonna do, in order to do the knee touch, push our butts up into the air. One hand comes off the floor, taps that knee, back into the plank. Butt up, tap, down. So you can see what we're doing is we're actually a little bit of power from the hip flexors. We get a nice dynamic stretch in the hamstrings and the glutes, and we're gonna push our butt up into the air, tap each knee with, the, with that one. Okay, after the plank knee touches, we've got our back rotations. We're doing them on the left and the right. This is why we've got the mat here, hands and knees. So I'll just demonstrate for you the right hand side one. On the right, you're gonna get your, your right fingertips, bring them to your right temple, Rotate up, the elbow goes up towards the ceiling. So now we've got a straight line between these two arms. Opening the chest, squeezing the shoulder blades together, down, up, down. So that's the right hand side. You'll obviously repeat that for the left hand side. After that, we have fire hydras. So it's very, very similar, except we're working the lower body with this one. It's the, it's the hands and knees with a right hand fire hydrant. Where the name comes from, just imagine you're a, you're a puppy dog heading over, walking down the street, and you wanna mark your territory, what you're literally gonna do is flick this right leg out to the side, and then down. Now the important parts with a fire hydrant are that we're trying to work our external rotations of the hip here, we're trying to work our glute meds, we're trying to work on that hip um, mobility and range of motion. So you wanna try and keep your hips as flat as possible. You don't want your hips to rotate out, you wanna try and keep your butt flat, and you're gonna rotate your leg only. Now that could be difficult. You see my hip does, my hip rotates a little bit. But what you're trying to do is just do the best you can, keeping this, this shin pointed out towards the back, up 
and then down. So again, we're going to repeat that on the left hand side. And the final motion we're going to do in this, in this whole circuit, which we repeat twice, is the squat thrust. So the squat thrust is actually a precursor to the burpee. Um, if you've never done a burpee in your life, this is how you'd begin to learn them. A squat thrust is literally as it sounds. You're going to squat down, hands on the floor, and then thrust the legs back. Thrust the legs in and perform the rest of that squat up to the top there. Um, so we'll talk through that as we get to it. They're the movements. If you do have any um, issues with those movements, just either skip them um, or next time I'm live on Twitch, pop into chat, ask me a question. Hey Jeff, that movement that you showed me there, that second movement, the third movement, not very good. Um, I don't have the mobility to actually work that one. So what can I do instead? Um, that's the value of the live stuff. If you're here watching on YouTube though, don't stress, you can skip it and you can, uh, you can try something new. All right, so now that we've been through the motions there, um, hopefully you've picked that all up. We're gonna start this time and get straight into the workout. In 20 seconds time, 20 second countdown, we're gonna begin with a plank. Now a plank itself is a hold. I'd like you to, um, I'd like you to try and, uh, and hold this for as long as you can. If you can't hold it until the end of the timer, just drop down, take a rest, and then bring yourself back up and hold it for the rest of the time. So it's a 30 second timer. You've got your forearms on the floor, push those heels back, squeeze the butt, squeeze the quads, and then breathe into this. So for a, a, a beginner that's never done a plank before, 10 seconds is actually a really, really good time. So if you can hold this for 10 seconds, you're gonna start wobbling, you're gonna start shaking, you'll feel your hips dip. If you need to drop, take a breath, and then bring yourself back up just to hold out the rest of this time. That's fantastic. Well done. Now, shake that out. That was a very, very cute intro, wasn't it? Ah, Sid. I, I have a feeling that when I was gonna do the squat thrusts, he may have got in the way with those. I was a little bit concerned about squat thrusts. Okay, so with this rest, shake your body out. We're gonna have the crab holds now. So just getting into position, feet down flat, hands down flat, push the butt up into the air. Now with the crab hold, again, you might feel like it's a very uncomfortable position. You don't spend a lot of time in this. Most people don't spend time with their shoulders extended like this. You might find that it, it's a little bit uncomfortable. If that's the case, just drop down, sit down, push back up. So if you want to do crab pulses, that's perfectly acceptable. It's a really, really good regression to learn the hold as well. Um, but with those holds, with a plank and with a, with a crab hold, you want to start thinking about your posture and start checking in with yourself every couple of seconds. And what I mean by that is that if you're in a crab, just take a look down. Oh, my hips have dropped. Squeeze the butt again, push it back up. Side lunges now. So I'm going to step off the mat. I find it a little bit more comfortable on the, on the rubber here. So I'm going to take a step to the right. Right leg bends, left leg stays straight, and then use the power in my right leg to bring myself back up. So down and up. So make these ones, make each one of these reps, separate discrete reps. You're gonna bring it down, you're gonna power back up and bring that leg back into the middle to stop. Right leg down, keeping the leg nice and flat, straight and flat, chest and torso upright. Finish that last rep off. There we go, cool. Bridge lifts. So this motion here, <coughs> we are doing the, the glute the glute work, but we're removing the shoulder extension from it. Um, with the reason why we're doing that is because I'd like it to lift a leg as well. So hands go out to the sides at about 45 degrees. That's to hold yourself stable. Push the hips up towards the air. Left foot goes out and down. And then the butt goes down. So squeezing the glutes, squeezing the hamstrings. One leg now doing a lot of work to hold your body weight up. The other leg, the quad is squeezing to push, to push the leg out straight, down. So push up, straighten, and down. So you're gonna be feeling this hopefully in, in the glutes. You're gonna have one glute working harder than the other as you hold your whole body weight up. Plank knee touches now. So each of these, uh, of these breaks, of these rests, feel free to hop up, walk around the room because that's gonna reset yourself. <clears throat> if you do start your, yourself, you know, getting, getting, short of breath means you are working. Just try and bring the pace back a little bit. So these plank knee touches are a dynamic movement now. So what we're gonna do is in this high plank with the hands, push the butt up, tap the opposite knee down, up, 
down. Again, make each motion discreet. I want you to start and finish in a plank like this. So make sure you're nice and straight. Butt up in the air, finish. Don't let the butt dip down. Don't overshoot the mark like this. Make sure you're up and finish in a plank. Good, 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 good. <clears throat> Back rotations now. So we're gonna do the left hand side first. Just remain down here on the mat. Now this back rotation, very, very important. I think this is one of the, uh, the most fundamental movements that you could add into a, into a body weight beginner regime. Um, because what it does, it actually starts to get you to think about activating your shoulder blades. Down, so here we go, rotate up and down. Now in order to keep both of your knees on the floor, you're gonna need to try and keep your hips squared away. Your shoulders, obviously, you're not. You're not gonna keep them flat to the ground because what we're trying to do is actually open the chest up, try and get to a full 180 degrees in between both of our, our humerus, which are the, the upper arm muscles, down and shake that out. Cool. So we're gonna hold at the top for, a bit, for at least half a second. Um, we're not just gonna go fling, 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 fling. I'd like us to open up, hold, and then bring it down especially the descents. You wanna control the descents with all of these movements. Um, anything where you're, you're picking something up or you're raising something, as you're using gravity to come back down, don't just let it drop with gravity. The control that comes with actually lowering something nicely, um, that's, that's just practice. It's all practice with, with teaching your body or actually taming your body is a good way of putting it. It's all practice in you becoming the master of your own body weight. Because um, you don't, you don't want to just let momentum do the work for you. You sometimes see that with, with certain types of fitness regimes where they, they add momentum into things, which when it comes to, to com competition and when it comes to doing things like AMRAPs can sometimes work in your favour. Um, but in order to, to learn how to use your own body, that's where you want to learn control first. Okay, fire hydrants still on the hands and knees. We're going to do left hand side first. So left knee goes out to the side and then down. So important, what I'd like you to do is go out, hold it for a second, and then down. So you're gonna feel this. You're gonna feel this in some strange areas of your glutes that you've not ever felt before. On the sides of the glutes, we're talking about the glute meads, we're talking about the hips on the edges here. And while you're doing this, think about your core. Think about bracing all of those muscles around your stomach, all of the muscles around the pelvic floor, um, a good tip for this one is to actually hold your pee while you're doing this. Just, just make it feel like you're holding your pee. Those muscles at the pelvic floor, very important for, um, for anyone that's thinking about becoming pregnant or has been pregnant or has been through childbirth um, because the pelvic floor muscles take a bit of a beating. And it's very important that we learn to, to reactivate them or just to keep them healthy, keep them strong. So out to the side and down. What I'm aiming for is to get this, get this leg out to 90 degrees or parallel to the floor. There we go. So again, we're not dropping it. We're just not, we're not letting gravity take over at this point. We're holding it and we're controlling it down. So all of my body, even my hips, my shoulders, it's all remaining flat. It's like a bear crawl. If you've ever learned bear crawls, um, you wanna try and keep everything looking flat and stable, but you're gonna move certain parts of your body around. Okay, we've got the squat thrust now. So this one's a little bit more intense. First round, I'm gonna show you the, uh, the regressed version. So this is the step back squat thrust. So for, for full beginners, here we go. Step, 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 perform the rest of the squat. Down, step. So the thrusts in this case is one leg at a time. You're gonna try and bring your knees all the way up to your armpits. See this? Down, squat down as low as you can. Step back, step back when you bring that foot up. Knee to the armpit, knee to the armpit. Stand up, full hip extension, squeeze the butt, bring the hips forward. Step, step, up, and take a break. That's one round chat, <clears throat> one round team. So if you're still here, well done. Um, if you're, this is your first workout, this is a cracker of a first workout. This is gonna get you moving. It's gonna teach your body how to, how to get into different positions. Thanks for the follow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, we've got 30 more seconds here. The way that this workout is designed, and a lot of these workouts that we bring here to, uh, to the Twitch channel and to the YouTube channel, 
Um, they're gonna be based on time on, time off, rest, repeat, intervals kind of thing. Very easy to write, very easy to follow along with. It's not the only type of workout that you can do, um, but if you do wanna get into some more specialized stuff, that's kind of my job. So I can actually write specific programs for specific sport goals um, or recovery goals if that's, your, if that's your thing too. So here we go, time is nearly up. Three, two, one, resume that plank. So remember the cues I taught you. Shoulders over the elbows, straighten those legs, squeeze the quads, squeeze the glutes, push the heels back and breathe into the belly. Now, if 10 seconds is your thing, drop down. One, two, three, back up, and then count to 10 again. Whatever it is, whatever your time is, that you feel like your core muscles start to break down, you start to shake, you start to wobble, you start to lose that, that stability in your glutes, that's when you wanna drop down, reset yourself, and get back into it. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> people, I like that. I like those biceps, yeah. All right, we got the crab hold, a bit of crab rangoon. Mm. <clears throat> Let's go. Feet, hands, hips, bang. So with this one, like I said, it's very easy for this one to break down. It's very easy to lose form in this, especially when you're looking at the ceiling and just over a couple of seconds you go, oh, look, my hips have dipped. Squeeze the butt again. So every three to five seconds, just remember, squeeze the butt, squeeze the butt, squeeze the hamstrings. Breathe into the shoulders. Don't breathe into the shoulders. I was thinking about my shoulders when I said breathe. That was poor English. Breathe into the belly, shoulders in extension, and then drop down nice and easy. Good, good. We got our side lunges. So we're gonna step up, stand up. <clears throat> I'd really like you to challenge yourself now. We learned the side lunges in last round. This is the second round. So try and figure out how deep it is you can go before you don't have that strength to get back up. Okay, start with the feet together like a matchstick. Take a step one side and bring yourself back to the middle. So I'm getting down low. I'm getting down as low as I can, trying to. Whether you do this or not is up to you. You gotta, you gotta try and, number one, number one, challenge yourself. Do something that you're not used to. But number two, be very wary of what your limits might be. And if you're trying to make yourself better, you often wanna try and figure out what your limit is and then work just below that. You want, a, you want a nice working zone that isn't gonna fail, it isn't gonna push you to the point where you just can't do reps. Um, instead, you wanna be just below your failure point, you wanna do some reps around there. <clears throat> and failure doesn't have to be not doing a rep. Failure can also mean um, a breakdown in form, okay? Now, I'm not talking about failure as in, as in a negative connotation. I'm talking about where we're not able to complete a rep. <clears throat> The English language is very funny, and sometimes words and, and phrases, especially when I say them, can be taken in different ways. But what I'm talking about when I say to failure, um, it's a breaking of good form. And that's how you should read it as well. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're ever reading someone's workout program or something online, and they say, do, do this, do push-ups to failure, it doesn't mean get to the point where you can't physically push yourself up. It means watch your form. If you're doing a push-up and your, and your scapula become floppy, that's failure. That, that's a breaking of your form. So you want to identify just before that. Let's go, plank knee touches. So with a plank knee touch, I would say that your form breaks down as soon as you get to the point where your, your body falls over like this and collapses like this. Because what you want is a nice solid upper body, nice solid lower body, so you've got straight legs. You're able to push yourself up into the air, bang, with nice power, and you can control that, that descent so that you're gonna stop at the plank. So push the butt up, plank, good, good. All right, back rotations. We're gonna stay down here on the mat. <clears throat> exactly the same second round as it was the first round, and there is value to that. Um, there's actually value in repeating and building up a, a central nervous system, mind-muscle connection, just doing the same things. Okay, left fingertips to the left temple, rotate up, hold it, down. Up, hold it, down. There we go. You might actually get some clicks and some pops in your back. Don't stress about that. If you do have joints that crack and pop and whatnot, 
Um, rule of thumb is if there's no pain associated with it, if things just clonk and pop and, and creak, but you don't feel pain, it's generally okay to let it go. Um, and in most, most cases, that's what will happen with a lot of people. Um, but if something clicks or pops or creaks and it hurts, that's when you stop what you're doing and speak to a medical professional. Um, because pain is, is, a, uh, is an indicator that something's gone wrong, something isn't quite right. So you gotta listen to your body at those points. Okay, right hand side, right fingertips, right temple. Rotate up, hold it, down. Now notice my spine as well. From the tip of my head up here down to the, down to the bottom of the sacrum, I'm trying to maintain a pretty neutral spine. I'm not curving my neck like this. I'm not hunching over like this. I'm maintaining a neutral spine throughout this whole thing, as neutral as it can be, because it is twisting. And it's fine that we're twisting because we're not under any load as well. Um, a lot of the cues that you hear about in, in weightlifting when it comes to you know, not twisting or not moving in certain ways, sometimes they're valid in that you will cause an injury to yourself, but sometimes they're just because when you do things in a certain way, they have a higher risk of injury. But if you do them under the supervision of a PT or, or another physio type expert, um, they are actually used sometimes to help strengthen yourself in unstable environments. So this one here, the muscles that we're working with our fire hydrants are actually really, really good examples of stabilizing muscles. When it comes to walking and running, and even just things like climbing up stairs, the glute meds and these hip muscles, super important to hold yourself and track. And what can actually happen is if you have weak glutes and, and, and weak hips, it can manifest itself into sore knees. Um, because what's gonna happen, your knees won't be tracking properly. Other muscles are gonna start to take over to try and make your knees track the right way. Um, and you find that, that having, having off, offset hip or glute muscles can lead to issues other way, uh, and in other places. Um, and that's, to be, to be honest, about, I'd say, you know, about two thirds of, of physiotherapy type problems come from this, this cross body contamination or this cross body compensation, whereby something in your body hurts. It's not necessarily that piece of the, of the puzzle that, that's causing the problem that's where the symptoms are showing up. So if your knee hurts, it's often caused from up in the hips. Um, if, if your back hurts, it's often caused from the glutes or sometimes the upper back and the shoulder region. Um, so look, we're gonna finish this one off here. Squat thrust. Actually, there's three rounds in this one today, not two rounds. <laughs> here we go. So squat thrust, down, push it back, push it up. Down, push it back, up. There we go, perform these squat thrusts. They thrust it out, in, squat down, push both legs, thrust them back in, stand up. Good, here we go. Up, squat down. What I love for you to do is get your whole palms flat on the, hand, on the floor with these ones. Whole hands down, bang, bang, and up. One thing that can happen, I just wanna talk about this in the, in the, the 60 second rest. <clears throat> Sometimes I see people do burpees on their fingertips, okay? I sometimes see people pop down fingertips like this. Um, and the reason why people will do that is because they don't have to squat down as low to get their hands on the floor. The danger in doing that is if you do start doing things on your fingertips, you're putting a lot of pressure on there. All it takes is a little bit of a mishap and you'll actually do a bit of joint damage in your hands. So whenever you are doing um, plyometric type jumping burpee slash push-up type motions, try and have a flat hand on the whole floor, please. Try not to get yourself up on the thumbs or on the fingertips, okay? Um, I see it happen a lot. And sometimes you don't even notice it until I, until I raise it with you. Um, so yeah, protect your joints, protect your fingies. Plank, third round. Third and final, if we do the maths correctly. Okay, here we go, holding this plank now. So this third round, I'd love you to try to hold this as long as you can. Breathing. Breathing is the most important part of a plank because it's not too difficult to actually hold a plank for a couple of seconds. If you just breathe in and hold your breath, you can form a very, very solid core and a very, very solid posture by breathing in and holding your breath. But 
after about 10 seconds, your body's gonna be screaming for oxygen. And if you're not feeding it oxygen, you're not gonna be able to maintain a plank for any longer than that. So you need to be able to breathe through these things. All of these holds, all of these, these posture type holds, you need to breathe, get the oxygen into the muscles, keep them working. Because <clears throat> a good aerobic environment is gonna be conducive to good endurance, no matter if you're doing like a run or a cycle or a, or a plank, okay? And um, if you're wondering, the world record for a plank is uh, just under nine hours. So uh, have a think about that the next time you're, you're at the max length of your plank and you look and go, oh, I got 90 seconds on the clock. That's another, uh, it's another eight hours and 29 minutes that I need to try and do to, to get to the world record. Uh, but if you have a look at the, the videos and the photos of the, of the, 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 the two guys doing it, because there's been two guys that have held, held the record for the past couple of years, it, it bounces back and forth between them. They're sweating a lot. So we've got our side lunges to do now. Um, so you can actually take a, a movement or a, or a posture where you're not moving that much and you can be doing a lot of work. And you know that if you're sweating, at that point your, your body's probably also breathing, which again highlights the, the necessity for good breathing during a plank because you need to feed your muscles oxygen. So here we go, getting down nice and low with these ones, one leg at a time. The leg that's bending, doing a lot of work to get your body back up. Sweet, good. All right, bridge lifts. We're getting back on the floor, taking a seat. How are you feeling, everyone? If this is your first workout, well done for getting to the third round. I'd love you to stick around. Your back is on the floor now. Arms out to the sides. Push your hip up into the air, your hips, and then one leg goes out straight, down and down. Try and keep the knees together. So bring the hips up, knees together, push that one leg out, engage the quads, bring it down and lower the body. So you're gonna feel the two opposite sides of the legs working. The leg that's bent and on the floor, it's gonna be the glutes and the ham. Whoa! <laughs> that really scared me. Welcome in. <laughs> Here we go. Bring the hips down. We got 30 seconds rest. Cool runnings, how you going? Welcome in, we're doing, a, uh, we're doing a workout here for YouTube, so I'm gonna continue on. Um, if you've come in with the raid, stick around, I'll have a chat in a second. We're doing plank knee touches now, 30 seconds worth. So, feet back in a high plank, push the butt up, tap the knee. Here we go, push the butt up, tap that knee. Nice, working our core. <sighs> Welcome in team, quick little intro. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a mid workout intro for those following at home. But my name's Jeff. I'm a personal trainer here in Australia. And what we're doing right now, we're recording a video for YouTube. We're doing it live for the beginners at home. So this is a green tiered workout. We also do blue tier and purple tier workouts for a little bit more advanced and uh, an extreme workout peoples. Um, and yeah. Welcome in. So after this workout, I can have a chat to you. Um, yeah, three, three minutes and 50 seconds we'll be in. Stick around, guys. All right, we're popping down onto the floor. Hands and knees, left fingertips to the left temple. We're gonna rotate that up. Hold it and bring it down. So back rotations. We're really trying to activate our back muscles. The rhomboids, they sit on either side of the spine in the upper back. We're trying to work our lats. We're trying to open up the chest. We're working our rear delts as well. So the left rear delt, really squeezing to open up the chest and down, good. If you've never done that motion before, it's a, oh, it's all good, it's all good, Cole. Cole runnings. How you been? How's things? <laughs> all right. You can't do this one? Little, little B cause, what, um, what about these movements, or this movement in particular, um, I'd love to hear it because that's what I, I do say. If you can join me live in a workout, you can let me know if certain movements are gonna be difficult for you, whether that's a mobility issue or, a, or an injury. And look, um, I, often, I often put my foot in my mouth and I say, you know what, everyone should do exercise, yada, yada, yada. Um, I don't obviously mean to call out anyone with mobility issues. There's, there's an obvious exception. 
if you can't do something because you physically can't, that's no stress. I, I'm, not, I'm not stressing about that, I'm not trying to shame anyone. But what I'd love to do is hear about what, might the, uh, what the issues might be and where we can potentially find a substitute for you, something else that can work the similar muscles. Um, because again, we're not gatekeeping fitness. We want, we want fitness to be everyone. We want everyone to have a chance to, to get some movement in as well. So fire hydrants now. We're gonna pop down onto the floor. We're gonna do similar to the back rotation with the arms. We're gonna do it with the legs though. So left side fire hydrant, up hold for a second. Bring that down. Notice my back and my shoulders and my hips. I'm trying to keep my back, shoulders and hips as flat as possible. If you can imagine having having a bucket of water on your back. What you wanna do is hold that bucket of water super stable so you don't spill anything, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you did a marathon on Sunday? Hey, nice. How did your marathon go, Cool, cool Runnings? Um, marathons are, they're, they're no joke. A lot of people have them as a bucket list. A lot of people would, would love to be able to do one. <clears throat> okay, fire hydrants on the right-hand side. Actually, you'd, you'd appreciate this motion, Cole. We were talking about before why I love the fire hydrant. It's a really, really good medial glute movement. It, it activates the glute meds, it opens up the hips, and the glute meds are super important for runners because running, especially road, road running marathon style, it's very repetitive, it's very linear. And one thing that you need is a very strong hips in order to keep your knees on track straight. Because if you, if you don't have very good glute meds, you can often get knee problems um, because you're repetitively impacting the ground. Um, so yeah, you'd probably appreciate that one. We got 30 seconds left in this workout. We got squat thrust to do. This is the precursor to a burpee. Um, so if, you, if you've not done a burpee before, this is what I do to teach people. It's, it's a half burpee. I'm gonna squat down, hands fall on the floor, thrust out, thrust back in, standing up nice and straight up straight all the way, pushing those hips forward. Nice, full hip extension at the top. So let's go up for 10 more seconds. Speed them up. See how many you can do. Squat, thrust, up. Here we go. Squat, thrust, up. One more. That's for everyone. Everyone in chat there. Everyone, everyone watching the YouTube video. Well done. Beginner level workout, like I said, we've got the green lights. <clears throat> if you found that one too simple, two things. The first thing is that don't ignore those sort of workouts. Don't ignore those, those movements. If that was too simple for you, you can actually use that routine as a warm up for a bigger workout. So if you're getting ready to do big deadlifts, you're getting ready to do big squats, you're getting ready for a big marathon run, spending maybe Eight minutes doing each of these movements as a warm up to your bigger workout, I guarantee you will help you. It'll help set you up for what you're doing later on. If you're just starting off as a beginner, that workout we did there, it was less than 30 minutes. It's enough to get your body moving. It's enough to, to elevate your heart rate a touch and start to start to really just activate parts of the body that, that don't often get activated when you're, when you're sedentary. Um, and when I say sedentary, a lot of us have jobs that we'd be sitting down or driving, um, and then when we get home, we sit on a couch, we watch TV. Um, a lot of, lot of sedentary lifestyle things can, can just creep in and cause you to have weak glutes, weak shoulders, low mobility. Um, so thank you so much for joining me on that one. If you're on YouTube, check out the, the other colors. If you found this one super easy, pop up to a blue one. The blue workouts are your, are your uh, uncommon tier. And then the purples are the epics, the, the more advanced workouts there. Um, and if you're, if you're here live, stick around, we'll have a chat. Thanks.